Hello there you guys, welcome to another of my live videos and today I'm just going to be officially um, updating you on some more uh, current um, latest news. So if you do consider, drop your likes and if you do consider, subscribe to the channel um, as always. So lots to talk about um, in this uh, video today, but the first topic of the development um, I'm going to give you an update on um, is in regards to Crystal Palace's uh, Wolford Zahar. So there is news uh, circulating uh, uh, from the media, um, including uh, Sky Sports, uh, saying that Wolford Zahar um, has basically told Crystal Palace um, he wants to depart uh, the club this summer and with the, uh, I think I think the main factor reason why why he wants to leave uh, the club this summer, Wilfred Zaha, is because he wants to um, experience the Champions League. So he wants to play in Champions League uh, football uh, for next season. And I think there's been quite a few teams that have attracted their interest um, in Wilfred Zaha. I think Arsenal were previously linked to him. Um, I think Tottenham uh, were also uh, previously uh, linked to him. I think from Crystal Palace's perspective, you know, they are reluctant to sell uh, Wilfred uh, Zaha. But actually, you know, Wilfred Zaha has done very, very well, you know, since he signed permanently for Crystal Palace um, in 2015. You know, he's fried very, very well, you know, especially um, under uh, Roy Hodgson. And I think he's played over 250 games uh, for Crystal Palace's uh, Wilfred Zaha. But I think it did say uh, a while back, that uh, was it last month or a couple of months ago, saying that Manchester United you know, were interested in uh, getting him back uh, to Old Trafford. Because it did allegedly say that Man United have got some kind of clause um, in his contract, which means uh, uh, which means uh, what Crystal Palace get from selling him, you know, we get like uh, 25% um, of the profit. Because obviously, you know, when Wilfred Zaha uh, was younger, you know, he did have a two-year spell at um, Old Trafford, but never really got the chance and never uh, really made um, an impact to uh, Wilfred Zaha. And actually, that season, that was um, Alex Ferguson's uh, last signing before um, he announced um, his retirement uh, that season. I think we paid around uh, £10 million pounds for him. But initially, um, he, began, he began his uh, career with uh, Crystal Palace as a youngster, then came to Manchester United for a couple of seasons. And then I think um, he went back to Crystal Palace on loan. I think he, had, he also um, had a loan spell uh, with Cardiff, Cardiff uh, did uh, Wilfred Zaha. So basically, Ole Gunnar Sol, uh, he's played um, under um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as Wilfred Zaha because obviously uh, Wilfred Zaha was on loan um, at Cardiff. And at the time, obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was managing Jerem of Cardiff and then he signed uh, permanently uh, for Crystal Palace um, in 2015 I think he signed a new long term contract was it last August uh, with Crystal Palace so he is under contract with Crystal Palace um, until 2023 but there has been quite a few teams interesting you know he can play as a forward he can also uh, play um, as a winner and obviously we do know Manchester United want to recommend a winner to come in this summer because that's obviously you know, one of the areas uh, where Manchester United um, are lacking but he's in his mid-20s he's 26 uh, years um, of age and he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him but one of the main factor reasons why he wants to leave Crystal Palace is because he wants to be playing in Champions League football so he probably won't be coming to United, Manchester United anywhere because obviously you know we're not in a Champions League uh, football uh, for next season so there has been um, a lot of talks um, about that you know going on in the media Crystal Palace don't want to lose him but I think from Wolford Zaha's perspective you know he does uh, currently uh, want to uh, leave so um, and I think he was previously uh, valued as I said um, at around uh, 70 or was it um, 80 million pounds but Arsenal have inquired about getting him you know Tottenham have inquired um, about getting Wolford Zaha but he wants to play in Champions League football um, as he has uh, currently uh, confirmed. So that's the big news to update you um, on that. Positive news uh, was coming out um, in regards uh, to um, Alexis Sanchez uh, yesterday, um, as I did uh, give you um, an update on, because obviously, you know, we're, we are expected, you know, to um, orchestrate um, a big summer clear out, but obviously, you know, Sanchez um, is one of the uh, problematic players, and obviously, he's one of the players Manchester United uh, want to uh, currently uh, get rid of. Uh, but reports uh, came out, was it uh, yesterday, uh, saying that uh, Juventus and Inter Milan um, had been in negotiations uh, with Alexis Sanchez's um, agent over the possible move, you know, uh, for Sanchez uh, this summer. So it is likely now that Alexis Sanchez next season will be playing his trade in Italy with either Juventus um, or Inter Milan and that's a uh, very very um, good news but I think reports came out uh, reflecting back um, a couple of days ago you know there was, there was reports saying that um, uh, Man United could use uh, Sanchez you know to sign uh, Paulo uh, Dybala uh, this summer so it did initially say that Alexis Sanchez's um, agent you know was in Italy you know having negotiations with the Juventus director about Juventus possibly making a move for Sanchez this summer and it did it, there was talks about Sanchez and Paulo Dybala um, as a potential uh, swap deal and actually you know Paulo Dybala has been on Manchester United's um, agenda don't get me wrong, I've got reservations um, about Paulo Dybala. He can score goals, uh, Paulo Dybala, but if he was to come to Manchester United and score goals whilst he was adapting other areas um, of his game, I do believe uh, that would be good enough. You know, Paulo Dybala's in his mid-20s, he's 25 uh, years um, of age, he's got a lot of years ahead of him. You know, he has been at Juventus um, a number of years now um, as Paulo Dybala. I've analysed it, analysed him throughout the course um, of this season, though he's enjoyed a very, very difficult time and he's been in and out of the team as Paulo Dybala because obviously since the arrival of Cristiano Ronaldo, he's uh, found game time uh, very, very difficult 
Liverpool um, as Paul Dybala. But he came out, was it, a week or two ago saying that Manchester United, you know, were in talks with Juventus to, uh, you know, over the possible move for Dybala and the reported fee was around uh, £85 million. Pounds. Allegedly, he said he was in London uh, the other week as well, uh, Paul uh, Dybala. But I do believe Manchester United, you know, need a goal scorer because, you know, we haven't been ruthless enough in front of goal, not being clinical enough. We've lacked goals. You know, defensively, we've got issues. We've conceded uh, far too uh, many uh, goals. So, yeah, there was talks about Sanchez and Dybala um, as a potential uh, swap deal. But the good news is now, um, obviously, I think Inter Milan um, are only keen on getting Sanchez um, on a long season loan, of course. And I think Manchester United um, can only, you know, sanction him off um, on a long season uh, loan. I don't, uh, Manchester United won't be able to sanction Sanchez off permanently, you know, based on his astronomical uh, wages. I think he's on about four hundred thousand pounds a week. Um, I think it initially, you know, does uh, rise up to around uh, five hundred thousand pounds a week when you take it um, into account. So we won't be able to get rid of him uh, permanently. So I think Man United are intending on, you know, sanctioning him off on a long season loan. I think Manchester United have confirmed. Um, we are willing to uh, pay um, half of his uh, current uh, wages. Obviously, it did say Manchester United would have to pay around £12 million pounds, you know, to Sanchez you know, to get him um, out, but we can't get rid of him uh, permanently, but we can get rid of him um, on a long season loan. So I think, you know, Alexis Sanchez, you know, probably would be interested in making um, a return uh, to Italy because he had, he's had experience of playing in Italy, of course, uh, when he was younger uh, with underneath. So it's likely he'll be either playing for Juventus next season or uh, Inter Milan, um, of course, uh, with Alexis Sanchez. But analysing Alexis Sanchez, you know, he's just been so inconsistent as a Manchester United player. And as I did, say um, he doesn't he doesn't uh, uh, get in the Galactico players spending big on players or whatever doesn't always guarantee you success and doesn't always get you in that commanding position and there you get there you go the prime example um, is Alexis Sanchez no we got him through a swap deal you know with uh, Mkhitaryan but um, he was a fundamental player you know when he was at Arsenal and all that and he's obviously you know played under Pep Guardiola uh, when he was younger so I thought when we got him he'd have been a fundamental player for us but he just hasn't exceeded um, he, he hasn't exceeded expectations um, at Manchester United um, and Sanchez and let's be honest he doesn't, he doesn't have a future at the club he is age 30, um, he has uh, lost um, that yard um, of pace and he's become injury prone, you know, since he's uh, become a Manchester United player. I think he must have sustained about four injuries now, um, Alexis Sanchez, you know, since he's uh, currently uh, been here, out with an ankle injury um, at the moment after just initially uh, recovering him, uh, recovering him uh, from a knee injury. So yeah, um, the good news is I think we can get rid of him, but we can't get rid of him permanently. We're going to have to get rid of him um, on a long season loan and Manchester United are willing to pay half of his uh, current uh, wages off. So likely he'll be playing his trade in Italy uh, next season uh, with um, Alexis Sanchez. Also, too, you know, Lukaku, Lukaku himself, you know, could be going uh, to Italy as well. And, um, you know, I don't know if Lukaku and Sanchez will both leave. Maybe they could. I'm not too sure. But Lukaku's been heavily linked uh, with a move uh, to Italy. Um, obviously, the likes of Juventus and Inter Milan have been interested um, in Romelu uh, Lukaku. Lukaku um, has enjoyed um, a very, very uh, difficult second season uh, for Manchester United because he's initially lost um, his place in the team. But I don't think Lukaku's got the capabilities, you know, uh, to play uh, to the highest level. You know, he doesn't have that endless endless potential he's finishing uh, concerns me don't get me wrong he can score goals as he has proven he's got a really really good pedigree um, in the Premier League you know Lukaku's still got three years left on his contract he's on £250,000 a week and Manchester United paid £75 million for him plus £15 million in add-ons which is reason um, the deal uh, to £90 million pounds. so we have got a history um, of spending big um, on players you know Lukaku £75 million, Pogba £8 to £9 million. but if we can get rid of Lukaku and Pogba that will help us with our rebuilding process and it will um, help us uh, with our uh, transition but Lukaku as I said you know he could be going to make making uh, the move uh, to Italy. Man United will probably look to recoup the initial £75 million pounds, you know, we did pay for him. Still in his mid 20s, you know, still has uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. But, you know, I've got concerns about him. He's a big game bottler when it comes to him playing um, against the uh, big teams. His first touch, you know, really, really um, concerns me. And I just don't think he's good enough, you know, to uh, represent Manchester United. So Lukaku and Sanchez, you know, could be uh, both uh, going, could, but could be both playing um, in Italy uh, next season. And I really, really do um, hope uh, this uh, happens, you know, to be um, quite honest with you. I think Solskjaer has actually, you know, spoken uh, to Romney. Uh, Lukaku and uh, yeah but we'll uh, see what um, happens um, about that but positive positive po positive positive news um, in regards uh, to um, Alexis Sanchez but as I was saying Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, is looking to bring um, at least uh, five new additions uh, to the club this summer and I think we'll need, we need um, at least uh, five new players and you can see the deficiencies um, in the squad you can see the areas where Manchester United um, are lacking we've got to uh, resolve uh, these problems um, in the summer Solskjaer is going to get a spending spree of around £250 million and uh, I think that can get you probably five players or maybe even more than five players depending on how you spend the money and maybe we should be sensible uh, with our recruitment uh, this summer it depends what we are like uh, with our recruitment this summer but analysing our recruitment policy um, is uh, very very poor obviously we do know Manchester United um, have got to uh, get um, a director of footballing you know to change the structure of the club and all that and obviously Ole and Solskjaer is going to need back in this summer and there has been quite a few candidate names you know who could take that uh, director as well um, at Manchester United but Ole and Solskjaer has worked out his transfer strategy for this summer I think he's intending on bringing a number of young players in that can grow develop and emulate um, into superstars so he's worked out um, his transfer strategy as Solskjaer and he still believes the Solskjaer 
now that we can attract our players there to the highest level, even though we're not in a Champions League football for next season. But as I did say to you yesterday, I think this summer is going to be a dilemma for Solskjaer, a dilemma for Manchester United, because we're not in a Champions League football for next season. It's going to be hard to get um, our current uh, number one uh, target term indeed. But yeah, we're going to get around £250 million to spend. Uh, we do know on this squad is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, so he's basically you know, still in the process of rebuilding. He's looking to buy him um, into our history, um, is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But at the moment, City are strides ahead of us. You know, Liverpool are strides um, ahead of us. And I do believe the likes of City and Liverpool and Arsenal and that are probably you know going to invest uh, this summer. So we've got to um, invest uh, this summer. And that is uh, very, very important. And, uh, I do believe in the next couple of seasons, um, our aspirations um, is going to be uh, the top four, because I think we're at least three or four years off, you know, for mounting um, any kind um, of title or challenge up. Um, I'm not critical of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at the moment, um, even though we have been in a bad vein um, of form. It seems to have all gone on since he's got the job permanently, because I do believe we need to give him this summer. But if this bad run of form continues to persist going on into next season, then I'll be critical of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and then I will want him um, out um, of Manchester United, because it went all well when he was the interim manager in his first three months. The results were good, the performances were really, really good good and he was getting the best um, out of these group as players and you know their expectation levels uh, were met but you know we want to get this club back you know to being up there you know challenging and winning uh, so where um, of course regardless of who the manager is I know it's Solskjaer we're never going to achieve what we've achieved um, under um, Alex Ferguson but as I said you know we've got we want to be back to the club you know being up there at least challenging and winning um, some uh, trophy because you know we haven't won a trophy since 2017 that's when we won the Europa League of course we haven't won the Premier League you know since uh, 2013 of course and I think we're years off you know from even challenging you know from uh, winning uh, the Premier League um, of course, uh, challenge well years off from challenging for it, but um, I think a lot of years off uh, from potentially you know uh, winning it. So we do uh, basically you know need to rebuild this summer. And we've got to be a uh, ruthless um, in this summer uh, transfer window. But you know we've identified you know the targets you know that we are interested in. Of course, you know Solskjaer's interested um, in a lot of uh, young players. Um, of course, and as I already said, yeah, I'd love Nicolas Pepe you know to uh, come to uh, Manchester United. And it did. Reports have been coming out in the media in the last couple of days saying that Manchester United are eyeing a forty-five million pound move uh, for Nicolas Pepe from Lille. And it did say Manchester United. Um, have been in talks with Lille, you know, to sign uh, Nicolas Pepe. You've got to be honest, he's the obvious candidate, you know, for the right wing because he's primarily um, a winner. But I think this Nicolas Pepe, you know, he's got the capabilities and he's got the attributes, you know, to um, succeed um, in the Premier League. And I think if he was to come to the Premier League, that would be the next step for Nicolas Pepe. And based on his fantastic performances throughout the course of this season with Lille, quite a few teams have attracted their interest. He said the likes of Arsenal have been interested in, Liverpool have been interested in recent months. Um, I think Bayern Munich have been interested. I think recent reports have said Real Madrid um, have joined uh, the race for him. But yeah, very very good player very very young as well only 23 uh, years um, of age has uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him so Man United have been linked to him and I think you know £45 million pounds, is it um, is a reasonable figure uh, for Nicolas uh, Pepe so like he could be uh, next season you know applying um, his trade um, in the Premier League but I believe that would be the next step for him he's 23 so far he's spent the entirety um, of his career um, in France um, obviously he's been at Lille um, a couple of seasons obviously I think um, he's got a contract over uh, Lille um, until 2022 uh, I think he's a former Angus player you know I can't remember the other teams um, he uh, played for but yeah primarily um, a winner and he's the obvious candidate for that right when he's got goals in him he's got a system he's quick he's good on and off the ball and he's got immense talent I think he would be a fantastic air for Manchester United you know um, if he was uh, to come in again maybe a player of his calibre wants to be in Champions League football though but if man would you take you know Nicolas Pepe if you know if Man United were willing to offer him you know a, 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 a national a national a national amount um, of wages you know would you you know would you go in for him um, in that aspect I don't know to be quite honest with you and um but yeah, you know, I think, you know, uh, Nicolas uh, Pepe, you know, uh, would be a uh, fantastic for us. But going back to what I said about Sanchez, we've got to get rid of him anyway because his wages um, are totally um, having a bad effect um, on this uh, football club. But yeah, it's looking likely anyway, Sanchez is going to be loaned out to Inter Milan or Juventus uh, for uh, next season, which is a uh, very, very um, good news. But yeah, Nicolas Pepe, you know, would be a uh, fantastic uh, for Manchester United, um, I do believe. Uh, the likes of Bushy, Dortmund, Jared and Sancho, we do know a lot of Man United fans would like to come in, uh, would like him to come in. Obviously, he's been uh, the, uh, our number one priority target, you know, for quite some time. Now, um, I don't think Jaden Sancho is going to come in because reports are coming out saying that Jaden Sancho is set to turn down a hundred million pound uh, move uh, to Old Trafford and he's set to remain loyal to Borussia Dortmund um, at least uh, for another year. And I think from Borussia Dortmund's perspective, they are convinced um, he will remain um, at Borussia Dortmund. Uh, uh, will Jaden Sancho? Jaden Sancho, nineteen, one of England's um, uh, 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 one of Eng England's uh, youngest um, upcoming talents, and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer showed an interest um, in quite um, a few uh, British uh, players. And of course, Jaden Sancho has been one of them. You know, primarily a winner, can play between the byline, can 
score goals, lots of assists in him. And he's been on Manchester United's agenda now uh, for quite some time. I think Man United were preparing to pay the £100 million, pounds, of course, for uh, Jadon Sancho. So we have got the financial power to meet his evaluation. But I don't see us now getting Jadon Sancho on the board. He has got a contract with Bushy Dortmund um, until 2022 um, with Jadon Sancho. So he, Man United have been heavily linked to him. And, you know, I think if he wants to make a return back to the Premier League, you know, it would create a better platform for him. Um, I think, you know, it, I'd love Manchester United, you know, to get a player um, of his quality, but I don't see us getting, a, getting him um, on the board now. But I think he will be continuing playing his trade um, in Germany next season uh, with Bushy uh, Dortmund. So I don't see not, not Manchester United now uh, getting him in. <laughs> And um, I do believe we need uh, new additions um, in that midfield uh, without um, a shadow um, of a doubt. I think Paul Pop is still destined to leave uh, Manchester United, of course, and... Um I think we do definitely you know, need um, a replacement uh, for Paul Pogba. I do believe you know we need uh, three uh, new additions um, in that midfield. And talking about Paul Pogba, we do know um, he's heavily linked to a move uh, to Real Madrid, and he's been linked to a move to he's been linked to Real Madrid, you know, now uh, for quite uh, some time um, as Paul Pogba. And obviously, we do know how much of uh, an admirer uh, we do know how much um, Zinedine Zidane is a big um, admirer um, of Paul Pogba. Obviously, you know Paul Pogba was talking a while back, you know, you know about his dream and that you know to play uh, for Real Madrid. Uh, reports have been coming out though um, in the last uh, couple of days in regards to Paul Pogba uh, saying that uh, talks have allegedly stalled you know between Pogba and Real Madrid you know reflect, uh, based on his uh, 13 million um, a year uh, wage demands and reportedly this is having a stumbling block in negotiations between Paul Pogba and Real Madrid because uh, reportedly the wage demands do not fit the wage structure um, at Real Madrid um, it didn't literally say that Real Madrid were not willing to match his £290,000 a week wages so if Paul Pogba wanted to make his move to Real Madrid he reportedly um, would have to uh, take uh, some kind of a uh, pay cut but I still believe he'll make uh, the move uh, to Real Madrid obviously Paul Pogba was heavily linked to move away from Old Trafford last year you know his former club Juventus were interested in him obviously you know Barcelona uh, were interested in him in Paul Pogba uh, last year based on his poor relationship uh, with Jose uh, Mourinho but as I did say reports were coming out was it yesterday uh, saying that Barcelona were preparing to put a bid in of around £130 million pounds for Paul Pogba he did say Barcelona could sanction Ivan Rakitic off you know to fund uh, the move uh, for Paul Pogba but I don't even think I, don't, I think Manchester United insists that he's not even there uh, for sale but I think if we were, were willing to do any business I think Manchester United have made it clear that we want around one hundred and fifty or £160 million pounds over Paul Pogba. Um, I don't think Real Madrid are willing to pay up to the £160 million pounds over Paul Pogba. And, you know, I think I still think he's probably uh, going, but, you know, since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's coming, you know, I've analysed Paul Pogba's performances and we have seen the glimpses of, glimpses of uh, Paul Pogba's best form. Uh, we mainly saw it in that uh, three-month period, you know, when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, was the interim manager. We mainly saw Paul Pogba's best form uh, then. And it, went, it was when mainly Ander Herrera was playing, you know, we saw uh, the best term of Paul Pogba. So that just emphasised how much of an impact Ander Herrera he did make um, in that midfield because he freed up the lights um, of Paul Popper but it was in absolutely uh, tremendous form uh, was Paul Popper in that uh, three month uh, period but at least in his last seven or eight games his performances have been way below par and maybe one of the and that just emphasises that he doesn't want to be in anymore but maybe one of the main factor reasons why Paul Popper wants to leave uh, Manchester United because obviously we're not in Champions League football for next season player of his calibre wants to be playing to the highest level maybe he wants to be playing um, amongst uh, better players but looking at it, his agent Riley Ola at least in the last three or four weeks has been in the process um, of finding um, a new club obviously Obviously, Paul Pogba still uh, got three years left um, on his contract so uh, Manchester United. Obviously, he's our most expensive player. Manchester United paid eight to nine million pounds him from Juventus back in 2016. So he has been um, here um, over three years. With us, he's obviously you know won the Europa League with us. He won the League Cup with us. Obviously, that came um, in uh, under the Jose Mourinho era um, in his first season. He won two trophies um, in his first season. Uh, Jose Mourinho, of course, uh, when he was here. But yeah, we paid eight to nine million pounds uh, for uh, Paul Pogba. But obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has built um, a great relationship up, a relationship up uh, with Paul Pogba. Um, you know, because obviously when Oligan and Solskjaer managed the Manchester United reserve team, you know, he watched some of this team in this day and age, you know, grow and develop. And of course, one of them was Paul Pub. But actually, you know, recent reports have said that Oligan and Solskjaer and Paul Pub's relationship is slowly uh, fading. And um, yeah, so that's what it, you know, uh, basically um, said. But I think it did say a while back that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, had spoken uh, to Paul Popper and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, um, actually said uh, that he, he insists that Paul Popper you know, will still be um, at Manchester United uh, next season and that's what it uh, basically said. I think it allegedly said in the press the other week, I think I updated you on that, his agent Riley Ole had reportedly uh, been given a three-month transfer ban by the Italian FA. Didn't really know the reason why, so that basically means that he can't, Riley Ole can't conduct any transfers in Italy uh, for the next uh, three months. Uh, that's what it uh, basically said. I don't know uh, why uh, this currently um, occurred, but that's what it uh, basically 
game. Said, but yeah, I still think you know Paul probably you know will probably uh, be on his uh, way way um, um, out of the club. But yeah, still one of the best midfielders in the world. You know, when he's playing in the right vein and manner. But I think Man United do want around at least um, 160 million pounds because he's probably worth around um, 160 million pounds. Paul probably still 26. You know, still in his prime. Still has uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. So um, yeah, so he's been linked to a Barcelona. He's been linked to a Real Madrid. So we'll see uh, what happens um, about that. Uh, we know Ander Herrera has left the club. That's one player who's definitely uh, left uh, the club, and that's bad judgment for Manchester United. You know, we've let him go on a free transfer, and I was very, very disappointed, you know, to see um, Ander Herrera leave. So we're going to have to see um, we're going to have to find um, a replacement uh, for uh, Ander Herrera. But for me, I think Bruno Fernandes, you know, would be fantastic for Manchester United, and I think he'd be the good ideal replacement uh, for Paul Pogba because Bruno Fernandes is primarily an attacking midfielder. Bruno Fernandes has been on Manchester United's um, agenda, you know, uh, for quite some time now. Bruno Fernandes, and I'm a big, big fan um, of Bruno uh, Fernandes. Um, he can score goals, he can provide, as he has uh, proven throughout the course um, of this season uh, with uh, Sporting uh, Lisbon. He's 24 years of age, you know, he has still got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. Um, obviously, Man United have been linked to him, Manchester City, um, of course, um, have been uh, linked to him, of course. And obviously, a player of Bruno Fernandes' calibre, obviously, the, most attractive, the, the more attractive option, obviously, you know, would be uh, Manchester City uh, for Bruno Fernandes. But Manchester United um, are still in there. For him. I think he did allegedly say that uh, Sporting Lisbon uh, want around uh, £60 million pounds for Bruno Fernandes. His initial release causes around £85 or £86 million. Pounds. I don't think Sporting Lisbon are demanding uh, for his uh, initial uh, release cause uh, uh, to be triggered if they're demanding around £60 million pounds for him. But I do believe, you know, that Bruno Fernandes has got the capabilities and I do believe he's got the attributes, you know, to succeed um, in the Premier League. So I do think he'd produce and deliver the same element of performances if he was to come to the Premier League, you know, as he has done uh, with Sporting uh, Lisbon. And he's a really, really uh, good player, as I said, primarily an attacking midfielder under contract with Sporting Lisbon until 2023. Had a lot of experience of playing um, in Spain when he was, uh, not Spain, uh, Italy uh, when he was younger, you know, of Undenese um, and San Pandora. So yeah, very, very good player. He did initially say that the other week that City um, had dropped their interest in a minute because it did initially say that City were in talks with Sporting Lisbon over the deal worth around £47 million pounds for Bruno Fernandes and it did say City were willing to offer one or two um, of their players um, as part of the deal but then it, it, it literally said uh, City um, had currently uh, dropped their interest in because I think City has seen him as a replacement uh, for Fernandinho but actually Fernandinho um, is primarily um, a defensive uh, midfielder so yeah I love Bruno Fernandes to come uh, to Manchester United I'd really really like that and uh, Yari Tillemans, you know, he's a player um, I'd also, you know, like to uh, come uh, to Manchester United. You know, his name's been uh, fl uh, been flirting around uh, the media, um, at least um, in the last uh, couple of days. Um, I've been reading up, you know, about Yari Tillemans and the likes of Arsenal have been linked to him. The likes um, of Tottenham um, have been uh, linked to uh, with Yari uh, Tillemans and there has uh, been um, a lot of talks um, about him uh, going on. Uh, Yari Tillemans, um, he's only 22 uh, years um, of age, so he's a uh, very, very um, young Yari Tillemans. Um, he has been on loan at Leicester uh, since January um, and he's done really, really well since he's gone out on loan uh, with Leicester. I think from Yori Tillemans' uh, perspective, he says he's expected to return to Monaco at the end um, of his loan spell uh, with Leicester. But I think from Leicester's perspective, they've been impressed with his performances. And I think Leicester and Brendan Rodgers uh, want to get him um, on a permanent uh, deal. So Leicester have been in talks uh, with Monaco um, over this. But the likes of Man United, Arsenal and Tottenham, we've all expressed um, are interested in him. I think um, he is um, a central uh, midfielder. He is um, a central uh, midfielder. Um, he's, uh, you know, Yori uh, Tillemans. And I think um, he's still in the contract with Monaco till 2022. And I think Monaco, you know, initially value him um, around uh, £40 million, pounds, but he can score goals, he can provide, so I do think if he was to come to Manchester United, um, he'd blend in very, very well um, in our midfield, so I think Yori Tillemans and you know, Bruno Fernandes you know, would be the right candidates to come uh, to fulfil our midfield um, area, they would be a fantastic game indeed, both very, very young, both got goals in them, both uh, can provide um, assists of course, and uh, yeah, so they would be uh, fantastic, so yeah, there has, still, there has been um, a lot of talks um, about uh, Yori Tillemans, um, obviously you know, West Ham's Declan Rice, you know, he's been another prime target uh, for Manchester United is Declan Rice and I like Declan Rice he's primarily um, a defensive uh, midfielder he can play as a centre back but I think he's primarily a defensive midfielder obviously you know Premier League proven learned um, his trade um, in the Premier League you know he's been at West Ham a number of years now he's been in the senior squad over West Ham um, a number of years and he signed a new long term contract West Ham till 2024 uh, back in December um, of last year probably based um, on his uh, fantastic performances but throughout the course of this season his performances um, have been very very good um, under Emmanuel uh, Pellegrini and Declan Rice you know could be available for around what, £50 million pounds or, or something um, like that. So I'd love him, you know, uh, to come to uh, Manchester United, you know, uh, Declan Rice. And uh, yeah, but he has been one of um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, prime targets. You know, only 20 years of age, very, very young. Still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. So yeah, there's been um, a lot of talks um, about him going on. Obviously, we do know uh, Idris Aguirre. There has uh, been talks about Idris Aguirre uh, also, you know, uh, going on. Um, obviously, I think the reports came out last month um, about Idris Aguirre. But Idris Aguirre is actually, you know, 29 now. So he's aging up a bit. And I don't think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's intending on bringing um, 
any you know short term players in. Uh, Madrissa Gay is 29 now, so basically now when he's um, aging up. Uh, Madrissa Gay, I think Everton did say they want around 40 million pounds for him because I think Everton are willing to accept the fact that um, he, do he doesn't no longer want to be there. Um, I think Ever Everton are demanding uh, obviously uh, over five times more than what they initially paid for him from Villa because Everton just paid over seven million pounds for him uh, for Aston Villa. Uh, Madrissa Gay is the defensive midfielder, but he holds his line very very well. He can break up the plays and energetic uh, midfielder, and obviously you know he's well Premier League proven. He's been in the Premier League a number of years now. Um, I think he's been at Everton over three years. Obviously, when he was younger, he served one season uh, with Aston Villa. I think he's made about 133 or 134 appearances um, in the Premier League. Um, as just a gate. All in all, I think 99 of them, 99 um, of them, them um, have come um, at Everton. He's still got three years uh, left um, on his contract. And um, you know, it's been the likes of Manchester United and PSG that have been linked to over just a gate because I think PSG inquired about getting um, a just a gate back in January, but Everton I think uh, wanted him um, around uh, 40 million pounds. Him so there's a lot of midfielders uh, that Manchester United um, have uh, been um, interested in you know Benfica's Joel Felix you know he's been another potential uh, Manchester United uh, target you know from Benfica very very young only 19 years of age I think this was a, uh, the, only his first season um, in the senior squad uh, with Benfica but Man United have been scouting him you know at least for the last couple of months you know reflecting um, on his um, impressive performances buyout clause of £100 million pounds, um, can, primarily an attacking midfielder can also play on the wing uh, can also play on the wing can also play him um, as a striker so he's a uh, very very versatile um, he's a uh, Joel Felix it's also said that Manchester City um, have been um, interested um, in Joe uh, Felix so yeah there has uh, been um, a lot of talks um, about him going on um, at least um, in the last uh, couple of months I think Liverpool expressed their interest in Joel Felix you know back in the uh, January uh, transfer window so yeah there has been um, a lot of talks about him going on and um, I do believe that Manchester United you know, need um, a central uh, defender. We definitely you know we need um, a central defender. You know we need someone that can go um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof um, in our back line because obviously the likes of Smalling, the likes of Phil Jones, you know, are not good enough you know to represent Manchester United. And you know Smalling and Jones have been two long-serving players at the club. You know Jones has been here eight years, Smalling's been here nine years, and um, I think we need to get him out of the door in the summer. I don't think we are going. I think Smalling and Jones will be Manchester United players uh, next season. But comparing Smalling and Jones, I do believe that Smalling's a much, much better defender uh, than Phil Jones. But um, I think it was a bad mistake for Manchester United, you know, giving Jones a new long-term contract, giving Smalling um, a new long-term contract, uh, which we shouldn't uh, have really uh, done. But um, anyway, um, as I was saying... Um, as I was saying, I do believe we need a central defender um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof and some Manchester United fans have said we need two uh, central uh, defenders and, uh, you know, obviously now uh, the club's number one target uh, for the summer is obviously, you know, Napoli's uh, Koulibaly. He'd be my uh, number one uh, priority because um, I think he'd address our defensive deficiencies, you know, uh, fantastically well and uh, I think he's got all the, the the capabilities and he's got all the attributes, you know, to um, succeed um, in the Premier League. You know, he's strong, he's quick, he's tenacious, very, very good in the air, holds his liner very, very well. Carlo Ancelotti has regarded him um, as one of the uh, best Centre back term in the world. It did say that if Man United do want to get him uh, this summer, Manchester United would probably um, have to break uh, the world transfer record for him, and I think um, we'd have to pay maybe around 100 or 110 million pounds for him at least. I don't think Manchester United are keen on paying um, over 100 million pounds uh, for Kula Bale. Maybe Manchester United may try, try to convince Napoli to sell him uh, for around uh, 80 million pounds, but I think his initial release cost Kula Bale um, is supposed to be around um, 110 million in his deal uh, with Napoli. He signed, it, 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 it was not too long ago he signed a new contract uh, with Napoli. So so he's under contract to win Apple um, until 2023. Highly experienced, 27, you know, nearly a 28, 28 uh, years of age. I think he's 28 um, in June, um, if I'm right, um, he's Kula Bale. And uh, yeah, very, very uh, good uh, central defender. Holds his line very, very well. And I think he'd be a great lead in our back line, you know, um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof. But Manchester United have been linked to him for some, for some time. We had three bids turned down for him last year. Obviously, you know, uh, Jose Mourinho, you know, wanted to recommend, you know, Kula Bale, you know, to come in uh, into the club. Obviously, last summer, though, our priority was to get Centre back uh, last summer, but obviously last summer the board weren't back in the signings that Jose Mourinho, you know, wanted to uh, recommend her to come in uh, to the club. But Colour Bali, you know, would be fantastic. And I think we need a world class central defender. Uh, uh, we need an experienced centre back, you know, we need a world class central defender because we haven't had one, you know, since we had the likes of Rio Ferdinand uh, and the man you meet uh, and the man you vidic. So that's one of the areas, you know, Manchester United uh, do uh, definitely, you know, uh, need to uh, strengthen up. And financially, you know, Napoli, you know, would make a huge profit on the play because Napoli only paid around seven or was it eight million pounds in from Jenk, you know, back in 2014. You know, he's been at Napoli five seasons. I think he's made about 211 appearances um, in all competitions um, as a Senegal um, international. But he's been um, on Manchester United's um, agenda for some time. And obviously the most expensive defender in the world um, at the moment is obviously, you know, Liverpool's uh, Joe Van Dijk, who Liverpool paid £75 million for in January of 2018. So he's been at Liverpool about 15, 16 months now. And um, he's done very, very well as Virgil Van Dijk. And... Um, 
I think imagine Virgil van Dijk and uh, Koulibaly in Liverpool's squad and that would be good uh, from a Liverpool uh, perspective but I don't think Liverpool are willing to spend another um, a big amount of money um, on um, a defender and Liverpool don't even need a central defender now you know they've got Virgil van Dijk there you know they've got Joe Gomez there it's Michael Manchester United um, of course that they were need um, a central uh, defender so yeah I think Koulibaly you know would be um, absolutely uh, fantastic and that would be a good good you know to start um, our summer off by announcing the signing um, of Koulibaly uh, from Napoli and I think actually last year he was uh, also you know subjected to, uh, to racial abuse of course and there was rumours saying that he did actually you know want to uh, leave uh, Napoli um, at that moment in time when he did uh, suffer uh, that racial abuse was it um, last year I think he, uh, sometime this year he also you know suffered uh, more uh, racial abuse you know did uh, Koulibaly but yeah I'd love him to come uh, to Manchester United because I think he'd dramatically um, improve his uh, defensively and uh, other defenders that have been on Manchester United's agenda we do know a lot of United fans would like to see Leicester City's uh, Harry Maguire coming in I'm a big fan um, of Harry Maguire I really really like him I can't put him on you know Koulibaly's level of out but I still think he's a very very good player Koul uh, he's a uh, sorry Harry Maguire you know he's in his mid-20s he's 26 years of age you know he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him you know well Premier League proven you know he's been at Leicester um, a couple of seasons now I think um, he was previously supposed to be valued um, at around 70 or 80 million pounds there was Harry Maguire I don't think Manchester United are intending on breaking the world transfer record uh, for Harry Maguire uh, but yeah he signed a new long term contract with Leicester last summer so he's on the contract uh, with Leicester um, until 2023 he's uh, Harry Maguire and um, yeah I think he's a former Hull City player um, he actually began his career um, at Sheffield United you know when he was a lot younger I think he played about 166 uh, games uh, for Sheffield uh, United uh, when he was uh, younger uh, Harry Maguire but yeah well Premier League proven of course and he's very very tall as well you know which is uh, very very um, beneficial actually you know Manchester United were linked to Harry Maguire uh, last summer but obviously you know we didn't come to an agreement to get him but we have got the financial power to meet his valuation we've got the financial you know power you know to uh, double um, currently um, Harry Maguire's uh, wages so yeah I'd love him to come to Manchester United but obviously Koulibaly would be my number one but some people say we need two central defenders and if it was you know Harry Maguire and Koulibaly you know that would be um, absolutely fantastic um, indeed fantastic business if we got Harry Maguire and Koulibaly in, um, in our uh, back line of course that would be a fantastic um, indeed and other defenders United um, have been interesting we do know obviously you know a lot of United fans would like to see Rafael Varane you know get recommended uh, to come in but I don't see us getting Rafael Varane because uh, Real Madrid um, are reluctant you know to sell uh, Rafael Varane so I don't see us getting Rafael Varane and I said the only chance I'd see us um, of getting uh, Rafael Varane you know would be probably a part of a part um, of the deal uh, with Paul Pogba but Rafael Varane anywhere you know financially he's going to cost you a hell of a lot of money you know discarding his release cause being triggered discarding him being part of the swap deal he's still going to cost you um, over a hundred odd million pounds um, is Rafael Varane um, Obviously, his release, I think his initial release cause is around uh, 400 odd million pounds. Um, is Rafael uh, Varane's. Is uh, Rafael uh, Varane's, um, I think he's, yeah, his initial release cause is around uh, 400 odd million pounds. You know, 25 um, years um, of age, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. And it's remarkable what he's achieved. I mean, he spent the majority um, of his career um, in Spain uh, with Real Madrid as uh, Rafael Varane, but he's done uh, really, really um, well. But I think he'll end up, uh, uh, I think he'll stay um, at Real Madrid. Um, obviously, you know, Tottenham's uh, Toby Ardwell, you know, a lot of talks um, about him. Obviously, look financially, though, looking at Ardwell, you know, he's a much uh, cheaper um, alternative to the likes of the Harry Maguire's or the Colour Bars and that. Obviously, no, not nowhere near as good or like the same kind of level but um, he's still um, a cheap um, alternative if you, if you look at it you know £25 million is available for this summer because that's his initial lease clause but he's well Premier League proven and I still believe that our Dewey you know, would be a good upgrade um, in our defence um, of audio what we've currently um, got so yeah there has been a uh, talk about him but I've got reservations about him now he's 30 years of age he's our Dewey um, he has uh, lost um, that yard um, of pace so um yeah, so maybe some Manchester United fans wouldn't like to see uh, Ardwear Elder come in. But yeah, there's been a lot of central defenders um, on Manchester United's um, agenda. Um... Talking about, you know, the likes of Rojo and Damien, I do believe that we're going to get rid of um, Marcus Rojo um, in the summer and Damien um, in the summer. You know, we can cash in for them too as well. Uh, we can get around probably £30 million, you know, for Rojo um, and Damien. Um, I do believe probably, you know, Eric Bay, um, of, of course, um, is probably, you know, going to be uh, leaving uh, the club. Well, he should uh, leave uh, the club because I think, you know, he burst into the scenes when he first came into the Premier League, you know, um, Eric Bay, but... I think at least in the last year or two, you know, he's found, you know, game time very, very difficult. You know, I think the amount of injuries he's sustained, you know, his fallout uh, with managers has totally had a bad effect, uh, a bad effect um, on his uh, Manchester United career, if I'm going to be honest with you. But I think Man United are looking to recruit the initial £30 million for him. You know, we paid for him from Villarreal, you know, back in 2016. As the update on my video, was it about four days ago? I can't, whenever it was. It wasn't, I think it was most recently anyway. It said Arsenal were interested um, in uh, Eric Bay, um, But I think it did say Man United want around uh, £30 million 
million pounds there for him. Uh, but actually, you know, it was uh, Jose Mourinho obviously you know, got eleven plays when it when he was at Manchester United. You know, he spent just under four hundred million pounds. Actually, you know, Eric Bay um, actually you know it was uh, the first signing. Eric Bay's made about fifty appearances in the Premier League for Manchester United. Um, I think he only scored that one goal. I think that came um, against Swansea um, a couple of uh, seasons um, ago, was it? Uh, but yeah, he's initially uh, lost um, his place um, in the team, so maybe we should get him out because he's um, injury prone. Um, he's Eric Bay. Um, if I'm going to be quite honest with you, and. Um, And um, yeah, so I think we do need to uh, get him um, out, um, Eric Bay. Talking about David De Gea, of course, uh, I don't know what's going on with him at the moment. Obviously, you know, we haven't come to an agreement, you know, to get uh, David De Gea um, a new contract uh, yet, so I don't know what's happening with him. Uh, Antonio Valencia, we know he's definitely leaving the club. Uh, we need a replacement for him at right back. I definitely know we do uh, need um, a right back. Uh, we need an upgrade uh, to Ashley Young, definitely. And uh, there's been talks of Crystal Palace's uh, and Juan Pesaka, but Anwan Juan Pesaka, I think, is committed to Crystal Palace, as is confirmed, and I think he's intending on spending at least another season ever Crystal Palace. Well, this actually, you know, came out um, a while back um, about Anwan Juan Pesaka, you know, 20 21 years of age, one of um, England's uh, youngest um, upcoming talents. So yeah, a lot of talks. There's been a lot of talks about uh, Alan Wan Bissaka um, in the past. Previously valued um, at around 35 um, or 40 million pounds. So he's been um, on Manchester United's um, agenda. So yeah, and that's uh, you know basically you know, mainly um, everything um, to update with today. But the main part of this video is to give you an update on um, in regards to Wilfred Zaha. Wilfred Zaha has made it clear he wants to uh, leave uh, Crystal Palace um, this summer. He wants to depart Crystal Palace this summer because one of the main factor reasons is he wants to be you know playing in Champions League football. Obviously, he's not going to experience this uh, with Crystal Palace, so I think he wants to be uh, playing uh, to the highest level. Arsenal have previously been linked to him. You know, Tottenham have previously you know uh, you know um, inquired um, about Wilfred Zaha. You know, Crystal Palace don't want to lose him. I think he's he initially valued at around 70 million pounds uh, last month uh, was uh, Wilfred uh, Zaha but you know I don't think Man United probably will end up getting him back anywhere because we're not in Champions League football for next season and maybe Manchester United are not keen on recommending him back because obviously when we had him in that two year spell didn't really make um, an impact at uh, Manchester United he didn't really get the chance you know to be um, quite honest we obviously it was our last signing um, you know that season before Alex, uh, it was Alex Ferguson's last signing you know that season before he announced his retirement um, at the um, end um, of that uh, season of course I think we paid around was it around 10 million pounds for him of course it did allegedly say that we have got a, like some kind of uh, clause um, in his contract which means if Crystal Palace uh, what Crystal Palace get from selling it did say we'd get around 25% of the profit said that um, a while back um, in quite a few media um, articles um, but yeah I think Wilford Zaha you know could be um, on his way out of Crystal Palace but if Wilford Zaha is to go anywhere Crystal Palace wouldn't want to lose uh, the likes um, of Aaron, Aaron uh, Wanner Basaka anyway so uh, yeah so anyway guys drop your comments likes below on the channel um, if you do consider subscribing to the channel um, as always and take care God bless and I'll see you again very very soon thanks for watching